first series of films show the results of tests carried out at Fisherman's Bend on Swir, Clampon and EDO fuses to determine their capability for igniting bushfires. It should be noted that the majority of particles seen in these tests, although appearing quite large, are less than one millimetre in diameter. The largest particles range up to two millimetres in diameter. The first film shows the operation of an EDO fuse without a choke or fire catcher. The cap is on. Note the particles falling from the bottom of the tube towards the left hand side of the screen. The second film shows the operation of an EDO fuse with a choke or fire catcher, that is, the normal mode of operation. You will note that still some particles miss the choke, although they do not reach the ground in an incandescent state. The third film shows the operation of an EDO fuse with fire choke, but with the top cap missing from the fuse tube, as happened at Wallenduck on the 12th of February. Note the fall of incandescent particles in the top part of the fuse element from the top of the fuse as the EDO opens. The damage caused as a result of the incident at Wallenduck was the most extensive of the bushfires on the 12th of February. Three lives were lost and over 100,000 acres of pasture destroyed. The fourth film sequence shows again the normal mode of operation of an EDO, top cap on and fire choke in position. The fifth film sequence shows the operation of a clamp-on fuse at relatively low fault currents. In this case, 35 amperes. And you will note, particles in each case reach the ground in an incandescent condition. This is the probable cause of fires on at least one of the occasions on the 12th of February. Again, note the particles are about one millimetre in diameter. The final sequence on fuses shows the operation of a clamp-on fuse with the proposed sparkless link inserted in the fuse body. Note no particles, merely a puff of smoke emanating from the bottom of the tube as a fuse operates. A series of tests conducted at Camberwell to check fuse coordination show the trajectory of particles emitted as a result of low voltage conductor clashing. Note that even in broad daylight, you can see the incandescent particles falling a considerable distance from the point of clash. A further series of tests were conducted at Fisherman's Bend in order to determine the size of particles emanating from conductor clashing so that these could be used in scientific calculations of their trajectories and temperatures. The films show aluminium conductors and tests will be continued to determine the effects with copper conductors. The particles appear quite large, but the majority are less than one millimetre in diameter. A few particles are as large as two millimetres in diameter. The scientific calculations show that particles could reach the ground hot enough to start a bushfire at a distance of 100 feet downwind of the conductor under wind conditions such as existed on the 12th of February, with winds gusting to 65 kilometres per hour. 
the particles leave the conductor at approximately 1800 degrees Celsius, the aluminium burning. The particle acts like a meteorite. As it burns, the heat of oxidation continues to keep the temperature of the particle high until all of the aluminium is consumed. An additional series of tests were filmed with a very high speed camera showing clearly the particle trajectories emanating from conductor clashing. The final film sequence shows a test conducted to show the effects of the limb of a tree across a 22 kV or 12.7 kV high voltage conductor. A 90 kilogram weight was suspended from a six foot length of sugar gum limb to simulate the effect of the limb falling across the conductor. One end of the limb was earth and the current passing to earth was approximately five amperes. You will note that sparking commences within a few seconds. The limb catches fire and eventually the conductor strands break and the limb, burning, falls to the ground along with the broken strands of conductor. This simulates the fire which commenced on the 12th of February at a place called Tatiyoon. Similar causes of fires occurred at Warbra, Merino and Pura Pura where trees contacted high voltage conductors. <laughs>